Okay, so this is a um, example of the use of uh, Autocrat with Google Forms, Sheets, and Sites. And this I um, this little system I set up because um, our finance manager at school wanted um, an electronic ordering system. So at the moment, if um, a staff member wants to order something for their department, um, they um, print off an order form, they fill in the order form, some people type onto it but most people just fill it in, it gets handed to finance, they type it up again um, and it, it's just a bit anachronistic the way it actually works. So this is a slightly different way of doing it. So if I show you what the end user experiences in terms of this ordering system for school, um, I've got a user here called orders at weeklypart.org just for the pure purpose of running this system. I've created a site as this user and um, there's a form on this site. So let's submit an order. I don't know. A fictitious company called PC Bits. I've got to give it an address. They need an address. One, two, three. Um, Wheatley, make an address up, a postcode. Let's put anything in there, a contact name, Fred, a contact telephone number 018691234456, that'll do. Uh, an email address, it can be me. There you go, it's coming up, that's me. Uh, contact fax, I've left fax optional. It doesn't have a star because quite a few people don't have a star. And this system will have every single cost centre um, on it once I've got the full list of cost centres. But at the moment, just for demo purposes, I put maths and science. So let's, I don't know, pick science. That's important because it will inform the cost centre manager. So if somebody makes an order on behalf of the cost centre manager, the cost centre manager will also get an email about this um, momentarily. Click on continue and then we can add an item. So we're going to add an item, a big computer um, whoops, that's the item part number. Put that in there, I think. And item number is whatever it is. Okay. So quantity, this is an example of where I've used conditional formatting on a Google Form. So if I put many, it'll tell me it's got to be a whole number. So nothing other than the whole number will go there. I don't know. Let's have 20 big computers. Um, and unit cost needs to be, again, a number. If I put something that isn't a number, it'll not let me get any further. So let's say two, and actually, a big computer would be more than that. Let's go for a thousand pounds. Um, and then you've got an option to add another item. If you add another item, it will take you to another page, which is exactly like this, except it will be item number two, and then item number three, and then item number four. So this is where this page breaks within the form and then you've got the option on yes and no to do different things. So if I go to yes, it's going to go to the next page. If it goes to no, it's going to go to the last page. Whoops. I've got to go no. And then what we have to do, if the order is over £500, is we have to supply three quotes. Okay, again, this one, um, the quote received can only be a number, whereas the supply name can be whatever you want it to be. So you can fill that in if it's relevant. Now in this case my order is going to be over. My order is going to be £20,000, isn't it? But let's pretend I've put some in there. And then I'm going to submit. And from the point of view of the end user, that's really all there is to it. Um, and it just makes ordering stuff pretty straightforward. Well, I hope it does anyways. This is something I've suggested they could use if they do. That's great. If not, it's a fun thing to try and set up. Then you can go to submit another response and bang in another order and keep on ordering stuff until you run out of money. Um, what will happen, um, I'm signed on as orders here, so if I go into orders mail, you see that I've got um, an order for PC bits. And if I just click on it, it generates a PDF. This and emails it to you, and it emails it to the cost center manager. 
So it's populated the order details here. We've got a big computer, we ordered 20 of them, and that's going to cost us £20,000. And all as an end user you'd do, and finance are insisting we get these physically signed at the moment, but hopefully we can get past that, is sign it here as the person making the order, and here as the person making the, um, the cost centre manager. And that's it. So how does something like this work? Um, if we go into the drive of orders, you'll see there's a couple of uh, documents. There's the order sheet, which is the form which is added to the um, to the um, site. So I'll click onto that. So this is a multi-page form. So we've got section one, section two, section three. Um, so that's the first item. That's the second item. That's the third item. So these are all identical. And if I click on to um, add another item, you can see that the conditional um, go to page based on answer is selected and it will go to whatever page you select. The other thing that's useful I find in forms now, if I pick quantity, validation must be a number. If I click on advanced settings here, you've got a range of options about what the value can be. You can put in custom error text, but must be a number is good enough for me on this. So we've got a nice formula. Um, the other part of this is the template, the order template. This is just a Google document, nothing particularly special about it. <coughs> um, this is adapted from a school order form, so I just have to make it up in docs. You've got a couple of tables here embedded with, inside a bigger table to get you that effect. And you notice that we've got all these um, double, great and equal sign there, merge fields. So this is where it puts the data in. So there's quite a lot of merge fields in this um, order form. That's fine. Once you've done it, that's it. You don't need to worry about it again. So it puts in all this data to the cost center and fills out that bit for you and fills out the bottom bit for you and finance do the rest. The order sheet itself, so this is where the results go, is um, using Autocrat. This is currently using the old version of Autocrat, but new and old versions work very much in the same way. The old version supports triggers, the new version doesn't, which means that when somebody clicks on submit it will do the processing automatically rather than having somebody to come in and do it. So this is the order I've just submitted. So finance can look at this and do whatever they want with this data. And basically it collects all the data. You can see that I didn't make a second, third or uh, a second to the fifth item there. So these are all blank. And then all we've got down here is some columns which I've added after I've submitted a sample set of data. And this one adds up the cost of the first order, so multiplies the quantity by the number. And these do exactly the same for subsequent items that you add, and this just sums them all together. The formulas are in the top row here. Okay. And in addition to that, it works out who the cost center manager is. So right down at the end here, you have to put in uh, cost center somewhere. And be down here. Cost center, there we go, cost center number. So what a formula here does, it's a simple V lookup, looks up K2, which is, I put down maths, um, in a protracted range, which I call managers, which is in the second tab on this sheet. So this, these two columns here, I've set up as a protected range and called it managers. So it will look things up in this table. So it looks in the second column, and uh, you put false in there to make an exact match. Um, so in that case, it pulled up my name. And I specified that um, uh, for science orders was the uh, one there. This one here, um, if you look at the formula there, all this does will work out whether it needs to send one or two emails out and if it's a cost center manager submitting the order you don't want them getting two emails so this will just um, 
see whether cell, in that case AZ2, is equal to C2. So that's looking at who is the cost centre manager, that one, and looking at who submitted the form. If they're one in the same person, then it will return the email address of just the cost centre manager here. If they're not the same, it'll return the email address of the cost centre manager and the person submitted the form. So they both get a copy of the order form, not just the cost centre manager or the person submitting the form. Whether that's what we want to do or not is another matter. Um, here, this is an important column for Autocrat. This basically tells you uh, the documents been created and merged successfully. And this one here means the formulas have been copied down successfully. Um, it's important that you make sure things like um, copy down the formulas is turned on. That's in the advanced options um, within Autocrat. And uh, one of the advanced options is copy down formula on form submit. It's only present in the um, old version of Autocrat, and hopefully it'll be present in the newer version of Autocrat um, sometime soon, perhaps. Um, I don't know about that, though. But that basically allows you to select which columns you want the formulas to be copied down. Of course, you need that to happen for it to work out how much things are going to cost. The final part of it, if we go back into this user's drive, is if you go into Orders, this is the folder that I've specified that the orders go into. <clears throat> um, so this is the one I've just created. So I've set it up to call it the file name um, the company. Um, so I called it PC Bits and Order. So they're all called Order. Something Order. And there we are. So Finance will have a folder with all the order orders in. I don't have to tighten them up or anything like that. So it's just another simple use of um, the Autocrat script, forms, sites, and a few spreadsheet formulas thrown together. Um, and just another illustration, really, of the sorts of things that you can do without too much effort. The longest part of setting this up was <coughs> creating this order template and filling around with it and getting it to look something like I wanted it to look. And then second was actually creating the um, form and getting all the questions in a, a, a sequence that made some sense. The actual setting of the spreadsheet was 10 minutes work at most. So once you've got this running, it will just sort of happily look after itself. Anyways, hopefully that might be of use to somebody.